In this video, I will be showing you around my uh, my Asahi Linux install on my MacBook Air uh, M2 from 2020. I initially tried Asahi Linux around almost two years ago, right as I got my laptop. I was looking forward to it, but at that time it wasn't really ready for use in my opinion and now I came back to try it once again and I was very very pleasantly surprised by how well it works. One of the big things about the laptop is that uh, it has a quite a big notch and you can't really see it in the screen recording but I can I'll show you a little box of how big it is approximately I'll also throw up a photo of how big it looks but with uh, with my experience with GNOME and such I was able to make the experience almost identical to the Mac OS experience with how it deals with the notch not including in like the modern Mac OS not the original crap that they shipped it with where you would have just elements hiding under the notch when they actually fixed that so yeah, I was able to make it look and function properly. One of the big things I really like is that when I switch over to a tab, it hides it. It fill it changes the whole panel to black and changes the font to white, so you can't even see the notch and it looks like a earlier um MacBook Air from uh, either an M1 MacBook Air or any laptop from before they added the notch and it looks just like it would on Mac OS, except it's a GNOME panel and has much more information. So, I was able to add my, uh, write some custom CSS in a GNOME theme to do that, uh, as well as using uh, Blur My Shell. So, Blur My Shell has a cool feature where you can see that it actually happening right there, where uh, upon having um, an app near the panel it will disable the transparency so for that I have a, a, tra uh, a transparency pipeline set to a slightly translucent white and when um, when the transparency is disabled it is it, it adds a CSS class to it which I am able to pick up on in my custom CSS. So when a flag is added, it switches the text to white and the background to black. So here is the CSS. It's basically nothing. Uh, the main goal is to change the colors and that's it. So I have the panel set by default to a black color. So when no, uh, it changes the panel to have a black background and a white font and then also when there the light panel uh, class is applied it changes it to uh, black uh, to black such as right now and it is important to make sure uh, blur my shell doesn't override this color and here in blur my shell an important other part is to change the background style to make sure that you have light selected or whichever one you want to use because if it is a different one then it won't function properly and they, because the it changes the uh, the class to dark panel and therefore this does not get applied and that's why it looks all wonky so as long as it's white then you, you are able to change the font to be white I, well the font to be black and the panel to be white so another cool uh, extension that I have to make it more like Mac OS is peak top bar on full screen so when you have like something like a video in a full screen it hides the panel obviously but you're still able to hover over it and see the bar when you put your mouse up to it and yeah another cool thing about running arm and uh, Linux on it is how good the battery life is. Battery life is almost identical to Mac OS and you could see me my usage here. I don't think it stores much further than well you can't really see it but 
um, in the past eight hours. I was using my laptop in the morning, then I charged it a bit, used it, and I charged it a bit more, and then I used it more. Uh, the the charging that's not showing up is because the laptop was asleep while it's charging, which makes sense. This was me using it while it was charging, that's why it's plotted. But yeah, the overall the the battery discharge rate is almost identical to Mac OS, which I'm very happy with. Most of the applications I'm using uh, are ARM supported and uh, because of the open source community even when an application doesn't have ARM support directly for download you're still able to usually download the source code and compile it for ARM and usually that will work. I imagine running like Gen 2 Linux would be great on a ARM chip because of how easily you could just compile everything for ARM and not have that many issues. Overall, I did, however, find some issues with Flatpak. That sometimes you download a package, specifically this happened to me with Mindustry. You download a package and then, in reality, it doesn't actually have ARM support, but the package says it does, and therefore you end up installing a broken piece of software. But that is pretty rare. Or actually vice versa also happens when a, there is no package support for ARM, an ARM chip, and, but the actual software runs on ARM just great, and you have to like go and install it yourself or compile it from source, as I said before. One example of uh, software like that was any CLI. Uh, it does work on ARM, but uh, the flat pa and the flat pack, they don't have a flat pack version for ARM 64. So, at the at least at this point in time, it is just a shell script basically. So, th there's no reason why there shouldn't be an ARM package, but it functions just as well as it does on x86. And these are some of the benefits of using Linux. It's the same familiar experience as on your desktop, all on your laptop. And overall, I do prefer it to Mac OS. One of the reasons I installed uh, Asahi Linux again was because Mac OS was just being so infuriating to me. I was trying to clean up my system drive, and it was saying that 80 gigabytes of storage were occupied by system data which I have no clue what that means and after searching about it I found no resources of what it actually is um, except like $20 apps that apparently clean it up for you or the other suggestion was to reinstall Mac OS which was like a not which is really not a solution because you lose all your data and it takes like half a day because of how huge it is and this is compared to overall Linux is just more preferable to me. I am it's you don't have it's less locked down. You get to do what you want to do and having it on a ARM system such as this is really great. I will say this is definitely not for everyone however, but it is it is something to consider. I will Gaming, for sure, is n probably not the best thing at this point, and despite the amount of uh, development being done by Asahi Lina and the community, gaming on uh, Linux on, on ARM is still complicated. It's not a download and just run it thing. It's a whole process of setting up compatibility layers and such. But for me, as someone who doesn't game on their laptop anyways, mostly because I have a Steam Deck and I have a desktop, it really is an ideal solution because it does everything that I want it to do even better than Mac OS can. And overall, uh, running Linux is does seem to be more efficient on the... On, uh, in a lot of ways than macOS did, like, the laptop just heats up way less. 
even now as I'm fully running this uh, OBS recording, the volt, uh, the temperature is only at 31 Celsius, which is so little compared to when usually the laptop is at a such a high temperature it's uncomfortable to have on your like on uh, on bare skin. It 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 runs just so much better. It really does give you the the control the control to do what you want with it and that's exactly what I wanted especially in the modern age where basically everything you use is a web app there is really no reason to not try at least try to daily drive Asahi Linux on your MacBook if you are a Linux user heck even games like Zero AD run great on Asahi Linux. I mean, I, I personally don't know how to play. I've, I'm more of a Age of Empires guy, but... In terms of performance, I have all the settings maxed and cranked, and it's running at a smooth 62 FPS, which this uh, refresh rate of the display is 60, so it's great. However, there, out of uh, compatibility or like hardware features, some of the things that do not actually function yet are the fingerprint scanner, Thunderbolt, uh, external USB-C displays, uh, like not adapters but USB-C uh, displays. I believe a HDMI to USB-C adapter does function, but a direct USB-C display does not. And sadly, the microphone also, the built-in microphone into the laptop does not work. However, having uh, earbuds, it it's no issue. Bluetooth works great, and I just put in my earbuds anyways that I would normally, and I just use the microphone that's on that's on the earbuds, and it it just works. Camera works. Keyboard backlight works. Display dimming works, Wi-Fi works, as I said, Bluetooth works, trackpad works, gestures work also, like all of these things that I'm doing are gestures, it's the same as on macOS, it's a three, three finger gesture to go out into overview, even further, etc. It all kinda just works which is amazing compared to what the experience that I tr had with Asahi Linux back in 2020 when I first tried it. It really was not complete for actually using it. But now it, it just feels like a laptop. It does everything it does everything that I wanted to do just like how I wanted to do with great battery life. Heck, I would probably consider buying a MacBook just to install Asahi Linux on it again. But overall, um, it's great. Strongly recommend trying it. At least trying it. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Um, I know usually I haven't uploaded in a while, and also I am probably not going to be uploading any gaming content anymore um i just don't have an interest in that uh and so yeah expect to see more techie linux content from this channel uh if you like the video please consider subscribing leaving a like ringing the notification bell also feel free to follow me on mastodon on Fediverse, and yeah, anyhow, thank you for watching, bye!